do that, they put a lot out on the line. Um, and really, it's, it's strange to see. I don't, it's hard for me to picture it happening now. Um, I don't know why it's so difficult to picture it happening right now. I think it is because, you know, you can do the same thing in your own town. You don't have to go and march all the way to the place to get it done. And you can share it with the entire world. I think it's a really cool idea to be able to share that with the entire world. But you are right, there is a lot less actual physical sacrifice from it. I don't know how much it impacts the way things get done. Maybe it's why it hasn't been done as much. It hasn't been completed yet. I think one thing they have going in their favor is that right now they are fighting legal cases a lot more. Um, I found that is that instead of doing these marches and making statements, they're really taking it to courtrooms where they can just physically say, you know what, you don't want this to happen, but after this court ruling, you don't get to say anymore. It's kind of like, this is how we're going to change it. We're going to change it legally instead of socially first, if that makes any sort of sense. I think it's easier to make somewhat because of that work and that sacrifice. I just think in, in general, all of our lives are easier today because of what was laid down before. Yeah, so exactly. The images that I had of a small child watching TV on black and white TV back in the day, right. about water cannons, German right. shepherds, right. the police were actually the, the force of injustice. Sure, sure. I mean, it, so in 69, maybe it was that right the last movement. Had but the now I think the movement, the, at least the public protests, are protected. The police aren't the adversary anymore. Right. So. And, and I think her introduction is like this preacher, it's like, we've been over all this before, we don't really need to fight this battle. Oh, it's the same argument, okay, you win. Because we've already fought and we lost, so it's, it's a silly argument. And I think the history sort of has, has plowed that field for us. It mm -hmm. took so much. Well, I think also some of the sacrifices may be hidden. I was in Fort Worth uh, after, this was just in the last 10 years, and it was on the anniversary of the Stonewall riots, and the Fort Worth police broke into a gay bar and beat up many people, and the GLB community had a hard time getting any media coverage. Mm -hmm. If you weren't downtown when it happened, uh, any type of protest to try to highlight, because the police claimed, well, we didn't know about Stonewall. We just happened to go to a gay club on the anniversary of, and beat up people. That got almost no national coverage. It could barely got local coverage. It didn't even get a byline in the paper. And so some of this, I wonder, too, if part of it is some of the incident, it had to be Matthew Shepard or someone to get attention. Mm -hmm. There isn't the equivalent of, you wouldn't let this man visit his significant other in the hospital, because that wouldn't have gotten national play. So I do worry that some of this is being hidden. Uh, like you said, it can get yeah. lost, yeah. and then you don't know. And that was just, that hit me when you were talking about it. I think there's a Matthew Shepard, we talked about this, Matthew Shepard, Rosa Parks, I don't know, there's certain degrees like that. Chris Bletz, and again, it's like the, the, the solution is super saturated, and then something just makes, something just clicks. Well, I think you need a reminder, because I don't tell you can keep going through the things that it could, oh, well, it's better now, isn't it pretty better? And then something else would happen. And uh, that would keep people aware um, of, and I don't, I don't know how much that happens. I do have a good Jackie Robinson article for you, though, that goes over some of the psychological principles that might be necessary that you could look to compare. So okay, let's have it. it. I'm still, I still have some good experiments. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. For me, I don't think we're <laughs> making use of the digital age is being lazy, because that's where we live our lives. And like I get that it's completely different. Like mm -hmm. the, the, we're two. I don't even think they're parallel. I just think they are two completely separate entities. And that the, the civil rights movement in the sixties didn't have access to this, but we do, so we utilize it. And if, another thing I think it's important to remember is people are still dying, whether it be by their own hands, whether it be by murder. People are still dying because they are in the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. Like that's why this is so. Like the worldwide coverage we are getting from the people putting videos on YouTube and news stories like this, even though 
I think they're important because even if that one video gives one person the hope to not take their lives, I think it's worth it. I think that is a really eloquent way to put it. There's only one correction, which I meant to address kind of in the slideshow that I want to say. It's like Matthew Shepard and all the other people that die did not die because he was gay. People don't die because they're gay. They die because people are uncomfortable with them being gay. Um, I think it's an important difference to make because it really puts a different light on the situation. He wasn't beaten up because he was gay, he was beaten up because people were uncomfortable with him being gay. Um, so, just throwing that out there. And that was a beautiful way to put it into words that I can't always get out there. <laughs> One thing, I think, and maybe I'm wrong saying this, mm -hmm. but I think since this has come up and the whole marriage issue has come up, I think one of the questions that should be asked is, what function does the government have in my marriage to begin with? Whether I'm heterosexual, transsexual, gay, lesbian, what business is it the government's? That is a very good point, and I love that point because, um, you know, we had the whole separation of church and state for a reason. And Marriage is sometimes a legal thing and sometimes it's a religious thing. A lot of times it's both. Um, I 
think figuring out exactly what role the government plays is really difficult because as far as taxes go, that's a government thing. And as far as adopting goes, that has a lot of legal aspects, which so if you want to adopt a child and you're in a gay couple, there are legal things that go on that the government can kind of put the brakes on and say, no, you're a gay couple. And if they don't recognize that marriage as a marriage, then they're not as likely to be able to adopt. Um, it's really hard to determine how much power they do have and how much power they really should have over who is married and then the title of being married, because some states have gone to a commitment kind of thing instead of marriage for gay couples where they're legally together but they're not calling it a marriage, so it's different and it's, it's really difficult to kind of put how much the government, how much say the government has in it. Although I think most of the problems that are being faced right now are government issues. They're, the, the rights of it are government. Just like with the civil rights movement, when blacks couldn't marry white people, the government was saying they couldn't, and then the government said they could. I think that's the point where the LGBT community is trying to get, where the government will just say, okay, it's okay, go ahead and do it now. Like, they're, they're waiting for that to happen. I don't know if that answered your question or at least addressed it at all. The government doesn't have a choice. It's going to be involved, but what is their position? But why? Well, I'll just, Social Security, for example, there's rules. We have to know the rules of the game. That's sort of the rules have been around for decades, if not a hundred years. And all I'm saying is it might be time to reevaluate. Oh, absolutely. But I, I, I might, I'm just saying the government is going to have a, have a role there. We have to know what the rules are. We have to know when this person dies, what does the law say happens. We just have to, whether we change, have to change it or not, we have to know the rules. The government has to say, okay, you died, therefore your Social Security goes here, or it doesn't. We have to know. They can't be living on a case-by-case -case basis. I like you, I don't like you, you're in Texas, you're in Florida. So we have to have the rules have to be clear, I think, is, is the issue. Yeah, as long as the rules are serving a purpose, that's a good thing. If they're just there to be there, just because not so much. always done it this way. That's yeah. not a yeah. good justification. I want to comfort the people who are uncomfortable because I think some of the laws are serving a purpose of it's okay, won't let this happen. Um, similar to the Jim Crow laws. Mm -hmm. I think the government sometimes claims to be a leader, but I think the fact is that the long term is eventually they do. Eventually, they do what we tell them to do. It takes them a while to get around to it. But it changes not as quick as we might like sometimes. Anything else? Well, I really appreciate all of y'all's attention. It looks like y'all have actually been listening, which is cool because, you know, you know how it is. Yeah. <laughs>